Hello everyone. Today's topic is need of biasing. Okay, in the previous class we discussed about the DC load line analysis. Today we will discuss about the what is the need of biasing. Okay, let's see what is biasing. Need, what is the need of biasing? Biasing is a process of setting the operating point that is Q point at the middle of the active region or in the stable operating point. But due to the following reason, the transistor is not operates at the middle of the active region. That is, transistor is unstable. So, because of the following reasons, uh, we will discuss what are those reasons. The transistor will be in the unstable condition. To stable the operating point, the biasing is needed. So, here the biasing is a process of setting the operating point that is Q point at the middle of the active region. So, the operating point we discussed in what is operating point we discussed in the previous class that is that is in the DC load line topic. Okay, the points, the intersection points of DC load line and the output characteristics is called as the operating point. Okay, those who have not watched that DC load line, once see that video, then you can find, uh, you can understand what is operating point. Okay, this is always this operating point at the middle of the active region only. Okay, if it is not operating at the middle, then we can say that that is an unstable condition of the transistor. To stable the transistor, we are using the biasing circuits. Okay, so why the transistor will be not operating in the middle of the active region that we will discuss now. Here we have the, uh, we are taking one transistor here. Uh, this is a NPN transistor. It is a emitter terminal. It is the base terminal and it is the collector terminal. It is a junction, emitter junction. It is a collector junction. Okay. Here, in the uh, emitter junction, the, uh, the transistor will be in the forward bias condition. And in the collector junction, a transistor will be in the reverse bias condition. So when emitter is forward by a, emitter junction is forward bias and the collector junction is reverse bias, the uh, transistor will be in the active region. In active region, transistor acts as amplifier. Okay, the both as the both the junctions are operating with the DC voltages due to the DC supply, the junction temperature is increases. So here, yeah, this is the emitter junction and the collector junction. For the both the junctions, we have to give the supply that we are giving the DC supply. As we are giving the DC supply to the both the junctions, the temperature of the transistor will be increases. So if the temperature increases, what will happen? We will see. Here, yeah. we have one formula. Uh, effect of temperature on the diode, we have used this formula. So this formula tells us that if the temperature that is I02 is equal to 2 power T2 minus T1 by 10 into I01. Here I02 and I01 are the reverse saturation currents. And T1 and T2 are the temperature. So here if the temperature increases, reverse saturation current increases here. So here because of this DC voltage, supply voltage, the temperature of the junction uh, transistor junction will be increases. So if it is increases, what will happen if the temperature increases automatically the reverse saturation current is also increases here. As the temperature increases, the reverse saturation current increases. Now, let's see if the reverse saturation current increases, how it will be affect the transistor, we will see. From the output current equation, so we have the output current equation that is IC output current is equal to gain into input current plus one plus gain into reverse saturation current. This formula we have already discussed in the common emitter and common base and common collector configuration. As we are taking the common emitter configuration here, in common emitter configuration, output is IC and the gain is beta and the input current is IB. That is output current is equal to beta into input current plus one plus gain into reverse saturation current. Okay, here 
if the reverse saturation in the uh, if the temperature increases reverse saturation current increases if the reverse saturation current increases what will happen automatically the ic will be increases so here as the ic not reverse saturation current increases ic also increases ic also increases hence the operating point that is vc comma ic is unstable so to stable the operating point we are using the biasing circuits so here if you see for example so there are three points here this is called as a dc load line for example assume it is what is dc load line we discussed in the previous class we are getting the dc load line like this on the output characteristics assume that it is an output characteristics line it is <clears throat> output voltage is vc and the output current is ic so assume that it is a q1 point it is a q2 point it is a q3 q1 q2 q3 are the operating points here operating point is what vc comma ic here when the transistor is in stable condition that is operating at the middle of the active region here this is the middle of the active region that is middle of the dc load line it is operating at the middle then we can say the transistor is in stable condition here because of this reasons what is happening here ic is increases if the ic is increases this operating point shift towards upwards okay as the ic is ic is increases this operating point is shift towards upwards so it is deviating from the middle of the active region here okay as it is deviating it is moving towards upwards then we can say that the operating point is unstable as it is moving upwards okay the transistor will be in the unstable condition why it is unstable what is a stable condition always the transistor should operate at the middle of the active region in this case q2 is the middle point exactly this point is a middle point but because of this reason ic is increases as ic is increases this operating point is shifting from the middle that's why we can say that transistor is in unstable condition to stable the operating point we are using biasing circuits okay so this is whether the biasing circuit is uh, good or not that we will find by using the stability factor okay stability factor is defined as it is the ratio of rate of change of collector current with respect to the ic not at constant vb and beta and it is indicated by the letter s okay now <clears throat> here if you write the formula here stability factor is denoted by s it is a ratio of rate of change of collector current that is dou ic to the <coughs> uh, it to, uh, to the <coughs> reverse saturation current that is rate of change of reverse saturation current that is dou ic not at constant at constant at a constant VBE that is base to emitter voltage and the gain is beta. This is the formula for stability factor. By using this stability factor, uh, we can say that whether the transistor is operating at the middle or not. Okay. Now, uh, let's see the output current equation of the common emitter configuration is given by <coughs> ic is equal to beta into ib plus 1 plus beta into ic not here so now we will derive the uh, above equation with respect to ic if we derive with respect to ic we will get ic by ic is equal to 1 is equal to beta into do ib by do ic do ib by do ic plus 1 plus beta into do ic not with respect to ic do ic <coughs> from the above equation if you separate 
डो आई सी बाय डो आई सी नॉट डो आई सी बाय डो आई सी नॉट वी विल गेट वन प्लस बीटा डिवाइडेड बाय वन माइनस बीटा इनटू डो आई बी बाय डो आई सी डो आई बी बाय डो आई सी सो यार वी नो द ऑलरेडी डो आई सी बाय डो आई सी नॉट change in collector current with respect to river saturation current is called as a stability factor s yes. so here we can say that a stability factor formula s yes, is equal to 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta into do ib by do ic this is the formula for stability factor okay so from this we can say that when in the we are using in the coming classes we are using the biasing circuits in the biasing circuits so whatever the equation we got that equation we have to substitute in the stability factor if the stability factor if we get s is equal to 1 then this is the practically then we can say that it is a good stability ideally when s is equal to 0 we can say that it is a good stability but practically s is equal to 1 always s should be equal to 1 then we can say that when s is equal to 1 then we can say that transistor will be in the stable condition okay when s is not equal to 1 transistor will be in the unstable condition by using the biasing circuits just we will see whether s is equal to 1 or not if s is equal to not if s is not equal to 1 that biasing circuit okay if the transistor will be in the unstable condition by using the biasing circuits we will make it stable okay in the all the biasing circuits we will see whether s is equal to 1 or not if s is equal to 1 that is stable Uh, the transistor will be in a stable condition <clears throat> this is about the stability factor this stability factor we can also defined as here we have the s dash and s double dash also this s dash is defined as the rate of change of collector current with respect to base to emitter voltage here i c not and beta are the constant this is a constant okay now we have one more one that is a s double dash s double dash is defined as do ic divided by do ib okay here ic not and the vbe is constant Base to emitter voltage. Okay, so this is about the stability factor. So we use this formula. We use this formula in the coming classes. Whether the transistor will be in the stable condition, stable condition or not, we will check by using this condition. If if S is equal to one, it is stable. If S is not equal to one, unstable condition. okay so this is about the today's class in the next class we will discuss about the biasing circuits